In this video, you will learn how to make this word clock. It is basically a clock which displays time using words. You will also learn the basics of shift register and how to use it with a microcontroller followed by using RTC with microcontroller as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's just first grab the parts that we require. 3 shift registers, 3 Darlington transistor PS, 1 Arduino Pro Mini, a real time clock and lots of LEDs with current limiting resistors. Let's first talk about shift resistors. There are 4 kinds of shift register. Serial in parallel out, serial in serial out, parallel in serial out and parallel in parallel out. We are going to use 74HC595 which is an 8-bit SIPU shift register. That means it will take 8-bit serial data and convert it into 8-bit parallel data. You might wonder why we need a shift resistor. Let's see. An Uno has 14 digital input output pins and 6 analog input pins. Even after combining them, we only have 20 number of pins out of which not all are output capable. And that is the problem because we will be working with a lot of LEDs in this project. A shift resistor consumes very less pin of the microcontroller, 3 in this specific case, and can control a large number of LEDs with it, which is 8 in this case. And that's not it. This shift register can also be daisy chained with another shift register to control even more LEDs and the second one can be daisy chained with the next shift register and so on. What I'm trying to say is just by using 3 pins you can control lots and lots of digital devices. So this is the pin diagram of the 74595. Pin number 1 through 7 along with pin 15 is the parallel output data. Like every 74 series ICs, 8 and 16 are power pins. Pin number 14 also called serial input, pin number 12 also called latch and pin number 11 also called clock are the control pins I talked about. Pin 10 is called serial clear which is used to clear the output of the shift register will be held high through other project. Pin number 13 is output enable pin and will be held low throughout the project. Pin 9 is used for daisy chaining and is connected to next 74595. Now let's see how it works. The latch is pulled on before sending the serial data. Then each of the 8 bits is sent one by one. The shift register determines that new data is coming by checking the status of the clock pin. If the clock pin is high, the data is new. When all the bits are completely sent, the latch is pulled high to actually reflect the data in the output pins. To execute all of this in Arduino IDE, there is a function called shift out having all these parameters. The first two are self-explaining. Fourth one is the 8-bit serial data written in binary format here. If the third parameter is MSB first, then the MSB of the serial data will be sent first and will actually be reflected in the pin QH of the register preceding the remaining data. And if third parameter is LSB first, the LSB will be shown in the pin QH. Now, the current output capability of this shift register is only 20 mA per pin and we will be needing more than that. That's where ULN2803 comes in. This is the schematic for the project and this is the hand soldered PCB which I made for my college project a year back. See how messy it is? Although the PCB works completely fine, I just didn't want to do that much time consuming soldering once again. So I converted the schematic into PCB, downloaded the Gerber file and uploaded it to jlcpcb.com. After uploading, you can also see the detailed information of the PCB which I really liked a lot. There are few parameters for the board along with the color options and it is perfectly fine if you just leave them at their defaults. But if you really want to dig deeper, you can click the little question mark button besides each of the parameters which will tell you what they are and how to use them. So after going through all of this, I ordered the PCB at a very fair price even with $2 off on first order. Check the link in description for more details. The PCB arrived in a week. The packaging is very well and they are actually in a shrink wrap. The quality of the PCB is also very good. All the labels are fine, the pads look great and look, I made a mistake. I actually ignored the size of the holes for the Arduino while designing it. But this is not a major problem. To fix this, I tinned the headers of the Arduino first, then I tinned the pads and then after aligning the Arduino to the pads, I heated them so that they get joined together. This worked pretty well. All the schematic and the PCB can be found in the description and don't worry I have fixed the set problem in the PCB. Now let's assemble the rest of the PCB. 
I like to use IC sockets and you should too as they save the IC from extensive heat and if you accidentally fry them you can easily replace it. I soldered the IC sockets and then soldered female headers to their respective places. Usually I solder only one pin then check if it is perpendicular to the board or not and if it's not I hit the same pin and make the header or IC socket or any other component perpendicular and then solder all the remaining pins. The headers are soldered too, but before soldering anything to this part, let's do an experiment. I have 5 volts running in the power rails of this breadboard. I have connected 3 LEDs in two different configurations. The left one has only one current limiting resistor common to all the 3 LEDs and the right one has separate current limiting resistors for each LEDs. Let's power it up and see what happens. Notice something? The right one is brighter than the left one. Let's see the reason behind it. You see, if you only have one current limiting resistor limiting the current to say 30 mA, then all the devices connected after that resistor will have to share that 30 mA. But if you have separate resistors for each, then each will get 30 mA of current, and hence they are brighter as the current passing through them is more. This is why you should always use separate resistors for each LEDs. I actually left the space for resistors here only if I had to connect one or two LEDs to that pin and decided to short all the other ones. But later I decided to just short all of them. So I took some leads saved from cutting legs of LEDs and resistors, bent them using a nose plier and soldered them to the board. After cutting excess leads from the bottom and soldering header for RTC, the board is complete. Now I moved on to the RTC part. I connected the RTC to Arduino like every other I2C device. Then I opened this sketch and set the parameters of the set DS3231 time by referring the commented line just above it to set the correct date and time of the RTC. Then I uncommented that line and uploaded the program to Arduino. Without disconnecting anything, I commented the line back again and uploaded the sketch to Arduino. Now remove power from the RTC, leave it for a minute or two, connect it to Arduino once again and open serial monitor. If the date and time displayed on the monitor is correct, you know that your RTC is working fine. Before connecting anything to the PCB, I applied power to Arduino and did some voltage measurements to verify the connections. After this, I uploaded this sketch to Arduino. I soldered the RTC at its place. I also soldered 5th pin of the Darlington transistor to pin 3 of Arduino and the very last pin of the female header to VCC, which I'll explain in a bit. If you ever had to remove the IC from its socket, use a sharp object and insert it in the gap between the IC and the socket and slowly twist it. Then move on to the other end and do the same. Continue this process until you remove the IC. While putting it back, make sure that all the pins sit flush with the socket. If they don't, correct it with a nose plier, then place it again and then gently apply pressure to both the ends using two fingers. That was a quick lesson for removing and inserting IC from and to the socket respectively. I will prepare the LEDs now. First of all, check all the LEDs if they are working or not to prevent headaches later on. Then I chop off the top of the LED. I am doing this because the dome shaped top makes the light from the LED much directional. But in our project, we want the light to scatter as much as possible. You see the difference between the two LEDs. The LED having the top is brighter because it is directing all the light to a certain spot whereas the light from the modified LED is scattering everywhere and you can barely see any of it. After this, I'll shorten out one of the leg of the resistor and anode that is longer leg of the LED and afterwards solder them. Cutting the legs of the resistor is easier if they are in their reels like this. I like to save this as sometimes they come in very handy like we just did in the PCB assembly. I took my time to solder them and made sure that the joint is really strong as it will save me from future hassles. After LEDs are done, I took a cardboard from the plans packaging 8x8 engine size. I made this template on Inkscape and printed it out on a white paper and two copies on a transparent sheet as the ink is a bit light. Now I cut the template to actual size and stick it on the cardboard using some glue. I made holes for the LEDs according to the length of the words so that they do not look dim when LEDs glow. Then I took four solid copper wires and sticked them between two rows of LEDs. 
I pushed the LEDs in the holes, keeping the resistor leg close to the copper wire. I soldered the resistor to the copper wire and cathode of LEDs of the same world together. Then I chopped off excess leads. Now I took three ribbon cables having eight wires each and on one end I soldered main headers and the other end will be soldered to the LEDs. These headers will then go to the female headers of the PCB. But which wire will be soldered to what word? According to the program I have written, this must be the sequence of the headers connection. Therefore, first wire of header 1 should go to word 25, second to 30, first wire of second header to 1 and so on. Now, you will notice that the last four headers are not connected to anything and you might also notice that the copper wire at the back must be soldered to 5 volts. So I shorted them all out and connected them to the very last header and if you remember, we also connected the last female header to VCC or 5 volts. The word it is and o'clock must always be on. Therefore, I soldered them to the second last pin of the header and on the PCB, I grounded them. Lastly, the word minutes is not always on and needs controlling too. So I soldered it to the fifth pin of third header and the reason why we shorted pin 3 to fifth female header while assembling the PCB as pin 3 controls the word minute in the program I have written. That being said, it is now time to check the functioning by connecting the headers at their respective places and applying 5 volts. And yes, that is the correct time right now. But one LED is not glowing and I soon found out that it was the soldering problem. So it is working great. I quickly soldered a DC barrel connector to the power pins as I'll be using a 5V adapter. For avoiding the light bleeding to other words, I used a 1cm height cardboard piece and stick it using some hot glue between every word. I started from the center then came all the way out. After this, I measured and cut the cardboard for each place and then stick it again using two drops of hot glue. I made an enclosure out of a 12mm MDF having internal dimensions 8x8 inch and made sure that the cardboard fits in perfectly. I also cut an acrylic sheet of the fitting size. I attached the acrylic sheet and also made a hole for the barrel jack on one side of the enclosure. Now I brought each of the vinyl to size by removing the corners and afterwards I stacked them together and stapled them on two opposite sides. On the back of the vinyl, I stick an opaque tape to the words which were of no use. Then I dropped the vinyl to the enclosure and also the cardboard I have prepared and powered it. And everything looks great. I cut a piece of cardboard from corners so that it is easy to remove them if required. Lastly, I changed the power wire to a thicker gauge so that it can carry the current with ease and also connected the RTC using a female header as sometimes it is required to change the date and time. You can add hot glue to hold the cardboard in place but mine has enough friction to just be there even if there's an earthquake. So the project is complete and I am satisfied with the result. But I must say that it's not looking as good on video as it is actually looking in person. I hope you learned something today. Feel free to share your thoughts and tips about the project and if you like it, please leave a like and consider subscribing as more videos like this are on their way. Thank you guys for watching, till next time.